What's up, everyone? This is your boy, Frank. Alongside me, as always, my hetero life mate, Aaron. Today on The Harsh Truth, we've got the Colin Trevorrow saga. Patty Jenkins re-ups for Wonder Woman 2, and it clowns everybody else at the box office. We'll be talking about that today. Stick around. We should lead off this first segment by giving a very happy birthday wish to Colin Trevorrow. Happy birthday to you, buddy. 41, I believe. 41 years old. Uh, you're my age, so you know, you're know you not the only old guy in the world, but uh, I wish you had better birthday stuff to talk about for you today, buddy. Yeah, really sorry. Do. This saga has just been really, really bad. <laughs> uh, so, Well, what have, we've, cut, we've cut through, what, like nine directors since they started the new trilogy? Something, Something like, like that. that. Well, all the problems up to this point have been with Han Solo. Well, not just. Uh, they cut the original director for the um, the one that's about to come out um, as well before they started shooting. The only person that they picked straight out the gate and stuck with was Abrams with uh, Episode 7. I think he may have been the only person that wanted it. Well, it's, <laughs> it's possible, but who could have who could have honestly done a better job with it? Abrams is his his level of uh, visual effects is pretty pretty intense. It is. He did a great job with seven. I think he would have been. I think he would have done a great job with eight and nine. And the fact that he's coming back for nine is just it's great for me personally because I feel like even though there were elements of seven I didn't care for. He still did a great job with the movie. Well, let's go back to the beginning of this whole thing. About a week ago, this news breaks. Colin Trevorrow is out at episode nine. He is no longer the director. Let's, let's talk about the reasons why first. They were not able... Colin Trevorrow and the powers that be Lucasfilm, Kathleen Kennedy and all them, were not able to get together on what this movie was supposed to be. Right. And as far as why they couldn't get together, it could just be creative differences, which is the thing that is always thrown out there whenever somebody leaves a project suddenly. But everything that I've read has, has said that with all the significant changes that needed to be made after the death of Carrie Fisher, Carrie Fisher dying, that yeah. they could not kind of come together on a way to handle this new direction that the film is going to have to go in without her. Right. Because, you know, you're obviously... The way that Lucasfilm is going to be doing it is they're going to be using a lot of cut footage from The Force Awakens and from, Epi and from The Last Jedi to kind of insert her, you know, strategically in places can. as much as they can. I'm sure there will probably be a little bit of that facial CGI thing like they used at the end of uh, at the, uh, Rogue, Rogue One. One. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of that to help fill in a few a few gaps here and there, but you now are suddenly left with this you know, necessary problem of telling the story without one of the main characters. Yeah. So and with the you know, deluge of problems that come with having to deal with, you know, what happened after her loss, they just were never really to kind of get on the same page. So, I mean, you can call it creative differences. I'm sure in a way that's what it was. But the reality is, is there was just things they couldn't see eye to eye on. Now, I think the reason why Kathleen Kennedy pulled the trigger as fast as she did is because she had already had all these problems with Han Solo. Yeah. They, they had, she had talked with Lord Miller about, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to make. They were all, okay, fine. They're all some kumbaya on, on the first day of shooting for Han Solo. And then eventually the, the film evolved into something that Kathleen Kennedy didn't want it to be. Right. It was supposed to be more of a buddy cop kind of funny thing is what Lord and Miller were going for, but they were like, no, we want something that still fits in Star Wars. Right. That even though it's not an episodic film, it's not one of the main ones, we still want this to kind of have the same feel as all these other movies. It's going to be it's going to be considered canon and it's going to be considered is, Han's backstory, so it has to be... Absolutely. It has, so it has to have to, a level of seriousness it, to it. Well, it has to fit kind of in in this box. Yeah. And when you step too far out of the box with too many elements, it becomes kind of its own thing. Yeah. It's not really, it, it kind of takes you away from the rest of the, of the film, the rest of the, the well, really, that's an important character. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely. mean, Han Solo is, is, you know, one corner of the Holy Trilogy yeah. of Star Wars. Is I have said it since the movie came out. Mm -hmm. I have literally waited my entire life for this series of movies. I've been a Star Wars fan since I have been old enough to remember any vivid memories at all, and my favorite character was killed off in the movie I've waited my entire life for. Go figure. Bullshit. <laughs> God hates you. Yeah, evidently. Now, 
after this, so after all the drama with Han Solo, you have to understand that she's she's looking at this that she's not able to get on board with what Jamara wants to do. So her choice becomes pretty clear: Do I make a move now before we've shot a scene, or do I wait until we get five months into shooting like we did with Han Solo, and then have this whole mishmash, garbage train wreck dumpster fire yeah. that it ended up becoming when we fired him and brought in Ron Howard. And so I think this was probably a preemptive move on her part to say, look, obviously this is not coming together now. We need to make a change now. So the mutual parting of ways. We don't want to waste money. Whatever. And waste time. Yeah, you don't want to waste money. You don't want to waste time. You don't, you don't want any more bad press because it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, as the way this is all being looked at is just being kind of fumbling at the whole process. Yeah. This is a much better problem to deal with than the, having to deal with it again the same problem they dealt with with Han Solo. Yeah. So you make the move now. So initially the question was, is who's going to take over? And a lot of names were getting thrown around. The two easy ones were J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson, and we'll get to those two in a minute. Uh, a couple of funny ones that I heard. Somebody had mentioned Patty Jenkins in, in some punditry that I was watching on YouTube. And honestly... I don't, know just, that, I don't know that they could get her anyways. Well, this was before she had, this was before she had signed on for Wonder Woman 2. Well, that doesn't matter. She now, still had a contract with DC. It was DC before is. she was announced to have signed on other right. one, too, I should say. Another one that came up was, uh, this is the one that I really didn't like. Somebody had said, why don't you bring in George Lucas to direct this film so he can kind of be the one that completes the circle since this is all you know his universe to begin with. My response to that was, hell no. Absolutely not. Did you see what he did with the prequels? They were garbage. <laughs> Kids that were, you know, 12, 13 at the time those movies came out loved them because that was their right. that was their Star Wars. Yeah. Our Star Wars, the original trilogy, is a thousand times better than that. If, it, if you could have taken if you could have taken the CGI effects, the graphical content that they had in the prequel trilogy, and had that during the original trilogy, the original trilogy would have been it would have been like plating gold on top of platinum because it's already fucking amazing. My problem with George Lucas coming in and doing it is he's he's out of touch with how to tell the story. He, he did a great job for the original trilogy, putting it out the way he did. Yeah. Uh, then he had his opportunity to come back and tell the prequel story, and he had all the resources available that he wanted for the original trilogy. He had all the money in the world, he had all the clout he could ever want as a director, and still put out poop. Yeah, <laughs> he. I mean, those movies were. I mean, and they they had their bright spots. Don't get me wrong. And I try to look at them now as just as an origin story for Darth Vader, as opposed to like a special star part of the Star Wars canon. And so I can watch them and be like, okay, if I just if I kind of simplify everything down to its base, which is you know they were an origin story for Darth Vader, then I can watch them and be happy. But they just weren't that good. Overall, they weren't that good. The, the, visually, they were much better than the original trilogy. But story wise, they were crap. With the exception of. Uh, of uh, Obi Wan and Ewan McGregor and the way he portrayed him, there was yeah. really not a whole lot to offer in those movies. Well, I think Qui Gon. Yeah, but he died in the first movie. He died in the first movie, but I mean, Liam Neeson being a Jedi was already badass enough. But the way that he portrayed Qui Gon was awesome. And then you have to give props to Samuel L. Jackson and play Mace Windu on point. Pretty, pretty. It well. would have been it would have been fun to hear him use the phrase "motherfucker" just once in that fight <laughs> with Palpatine right, right at the end. Uh, another name that came up was John Favreau, and that was interesting. He's kind of a darling at Disney and Marvel because of what he did to help get the MCU kickstarted with the first two Iron Man movies. Yeah, but he's going to be really wrapped up with this live action Lion King thing for the next couple of years. Now, uh, really, for all the names that got thrown around at the beginning of all this when Trevorrow left, the only two that really mattered were J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson. Yeah, because they were like one and one A and one B. It's, <laughs> It was even money on both those on one of those two coming in and taking over the film. For one, J.J. Abrams for one because he kind of kickstarted this whole this whole new trilogy. He did it in a very very good way with Force Awakens. Uh, the other one was Ryan Johnson, who has just finished. You know, now I would imagine that by now the final cut of Last Jedi is done. They're probably oh, tweaking yeah, a few things, be. but I well, they gotta be done. We're so close. So to I'm release pretty sure it has, it has to be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Kathleen Kennedy has already seen the movie about seven times by now. So yeah. she's got to be pretty happy with it, and so, so if they're happy with what he did, it seemed pretty a pretty easy choice to say, "Oh, well, why don't you just go ahead and you know take a couple weeks off, do whatever, and then jump right into shooting episode nine. Yeah, he's already he's already crafted his part of the story. It's really he's 
probably already still kind of in step mentally, just go from one movie to the other and keep on filming. So I think it was even money on Abrams and Johnson when all this went down. My, honestly, I thought it was going to be Ryan Johnson. I mean, it makes sense. It, like you said, it makes sense to cut from one, take a couple weeks off, and go right back to it. You're in the same mindset. You've already worked with all these people. They know how to take direction from you. And then you can just f- f- go. Just go with it. And I feel like that would be that would be more fluid. We would have a finished product. We wouldn't have this pushed off bullshit to uh, to May from December, which is only a f- handful of months, but still, um, it, it's forever for us fans. Exactly, <laughs> it's it's an eternity. But I think that I think that if they would have stuck with him and done like you said, just take a couple weeks off and jump into it, they would have been able to flesh out the entirety of the movie a lot quicker because they're already used to it. Now, that's not to say that they're not also used to J.J. Abrams because J.J. Abrams did such a great job with uh, with The Force Awakens. All these actors have been under both of these people already. It's going to be different going from Johnson back to Abrams, but it can't be that different. It's still Star Wars. I think, like we had already discussed earlier, the, the the longest amount of time that it's going to take to get this movie out is where they're cutting and re-editing Carrie Fisher. He already killed one parent. Why not go after the other one? You I, know? I, was a, I was a big fan of the idea that all three of them die at some point in this new trilogy. I thought, so I way, really thought Hamill was going to die in the first one. I feel like, as the progression goes with everything... Yoda was the uh, Yoda was the Obi Wan of the prequel trilogy. Obi Wan was the Obi Wan of the original trilogy, and now Mark Hamill is going to be the Obi Wan of the new trilogy. And if they continue this kind of pattern, which we already know they're going to, I mean, if you look at if you look at seven and you look at three or four, seven and four are the same movie, just with slightly different graphics and changes to certain key plot elements. You know what I mean? Um, I expect that Ray is going to be Obi-Wan in 10, 11, 12. Moving on, now we've yeah. got Patty Jenkins. <laughs> now we've got Patty Jenkins signing on officially for Wonder Woman 2. Uh, was this a big shock at all? No, not even a little bit. <laughs> it's like, oh, Patty Jenkins got signed for Wonder Woman 2, and I was like, duh. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, who else was going to do it? I mean, if you had gone from Patty Jenkins to anybody else, let's say you'd gotten Spielberg or Scorsese or anybody, the backlash would have been, you know, oh well, no, you went from the female director to the male director, and that would have been the problem. So the question is, is what female directors out there could have done it? Well, you've got Patty Jenkins because she'd done it. You've got somebody like Ava DuVernay who probably could have done it and done it really well. But past that, who've you got? You've got nobody. <laughs> So the well, only to pick real... up on what we talked last time, I think they could have brought in uh, James Cameron. <laughs> they could have brought in okay, just just as just as bullshit. They could have been like, "Oh, did James Cameron's going to direct the next one?" Oh, what's that? You think he could have done a better job? Yeah, Pretty here you good. go, buddy. Go on, James Cameron. <laughs> Sarah Connor. <laughs> but yeah, just who else were you going to get? I mean, not get. She's done for DC, just with one movie to pull it up from the just like the valley it was in from Dawn of Justice that is still in I mean it's it was a no brainer she was going to come back I think the biggest thing that we were that would have been concerning about whether or not she was going to come back was the fact that she was she did so well with the first one that it put a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, but that would do that. Like anybody, anybody would get a chip on their shoulder with some, making a box office hit like that, and then coming in and being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna direct the next one, but I'm not gonna do it for the bus fare that you paid me last time." I want. I wonder why DC doesn't go to her and say, "Look, we want you to be our Kevin Feige, or to at least be one of them." Because she's the only person so far that has made a really good DCEU movie. The rest of them have all missed very, very badly. Despite the fact that everybody goes into the theaters wanting to see these movies be good, 
hopeful that they're good, even if the trailers haven't been great, because the Batman vs. Superman trailers were not great. But people Some still went good. into the theater. Yeah. So like, this is going to be a great movie. Yeah, and then walked out kind of like, whatever. Why not? Well, we saw Batman and Superman together. That's a great thing. Yeah, but that's yeah. all you can really say about the movie. Yeah, though. exactly. Why not give her the keys to the to the fucking Cadillac and say, "Hey, <laughs> just help us guide." Here's here's our plan. Help us guide the rest of the stuff because it's worked great for Marvel having Kevin Feige at the at the top of the tree saying, "Okay, this is what we need to do to make sure these stories all work out." No, it's not going to have any involvement in DCU past uh, I don't Justice know that he, League, finishing Justice League, and maybe Batgirl. Yeah, I don't know that he can. Like, legally, I don't know that he can have too much influence over it because of how much influence he had over Marvel. Well, but, but regard, regardless of that, he's, he's just not going to. Right. So, and then whoever is directing uh, Aquaman is only directing really that one movie, and then he's just kind of going off to the side. But you've got, you know, whoever up in the offices somewhere saying, oh, we want all this, we want all this, we want all this, but they're not really having, they're not really getting their directors together and saying, look, guys, this is our broad vision. We want you guys to be a part of this thing. Nobody in DC has done that the way that Kevin Feige's done it for Marvel, and I well, think that's one of the reasons why DC movies are really just not hitting hard. I mean, it's like just like we talked about in our last video, Marvel has a formula, and DC said, fuck your formula, we're making our own. So, but their formula is to throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks. Exactly. That's, 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 that's what the problem is. <laughs> they, they, they're not going to they're not gonna go the same route to have like a lead director, you know, the guy who's overseeing the broad picture of everything. They're not going to go that route because Marvel took that route. They're going to go a different route so that they can make their own path and try and surpass Marvel. Because, yeah, you've got the... The camera. Yeah, you got you got uh, you got you got this path that Marvel's carved in like the grand fucking canyon of movie paths. You can you can go really left and really right on this path and still not hit a fucking wall for Marvel. And we've seen that with Guardians of the Galaxy. That's out of left field. Has you know how is that going to tie in? Well, it's going to tie in really well. And then Ant-Man. Ant-Man was a standalone. That could have been its own movie by itself. Had nothing to do with the Marvel Universe. Came in without an issue, you know? You can go all this way over here and all this way over here and still not hit a wall and make a great movie for Marvel. That still ties into the Marvel Universe. And DC's like, oh, we're gonna branch in to the Grand Canyon and then we're gonna take a fucking butter knife and carve our own little path over here where... You go left or right, and you hit. As I recall, didn't they? Didn't they talk to Christopher Nolan about kind of shepherding this whole thing? Uh But either Christopher Nolan didn't want to do it because his Batman, his incarnation of Batman, wasn't going to be involved. Yeah. Or he was just yeah. like, eh, I just want to get away from the comic book thing for a while because I, I, you know, he just finished the Batman movies. I think he didn't. He didn't even really want to do Batman in the sense that everybody else wanted Batman. That's why we got the Batman style that we did from Nolan. That's why we got the more realistic, this could actually happen, Batman. Well, the movie would have still had to have been good, though. Because you could have had Christian Bale in there instead of Ben Affleck. Yeah. If the movie surrounding it was still just not great, then it wouldn't have mattered much. I think you need that guiding hand that says, okay, you know, here's, here's where we're at, here's where we want to be. Now, we can branch off here and there, but all, all points, all paths need to lead to this goal. Yeah. And Marvel's doing it with the Infinity Wars. All these different paths that these characters are taking are leading to this every, final show. Every, literally every single Marvel movie that we have seen has had some kind of reference or like little Easter egg that leads us to Infinity Wars. And that's been since fucking Iron Man 1. We've had every little thing has had something to do with a movie they planned almost 15 fucking years ago. DC's never going to have that. And the thing is, is DC's been planning their combined universe for almost as long as Marvel did. Oh, yeah. But Marvel did it, Marvel did it first, yeah. and it made them back off. Yeah, and DC, for years, they've been people have been clamoring over a Batman vs. Superman together. <clears throat> the fact that it is so just disheveled, so chaotic, so, you know, I don't think if it, 10 years ago, if it, if it, but I don't understand why they're just like, okay, here's, here's a ton of money. Just make us another Wonder Woman movie. 
Well, what about all your other crap festivals? Yeah. What about Be- Beaver's S? What about Suicide Squad, which I can't watch anymore? <laughs> yeah. What about you know this movie? You know all these movies that haven't quite made it. We still have no idea what Flash is going to give us. That's gone to a pay- back to a page one rewrite. I think three or four times. Has it really? Yeah. I know it's going to be. Been through, it's going to be a flashpoint. It's been through two or three. Regardless of regardless of whether or not Ben Affleck leaves or does not leave. It is going to be a Flashpoint movie. My problem is, is they're not going to use Flashpoint because it's a cool storyline. They're going to use Flashpoint as a way to reset everything they've screwed up to this point. You don't think they would? It would look like they were ripping off their own TV show. Not really, because, because I've always been iffy that they were going to mess with. It. Well, it, it, initially, anyway, before all the Ben Affleck drama started, and you had, and you kind of need a way to kind of explain him off if it does if he does leave. I was always assuming that since they don't want to put their TV and movie universe together at all, that maybe they would kind of avoid the Flashpoint thing in any significant they can't. way. They can't avoid the Flashpoint thing at all because time travel is a huge, huge, huge thing that has to do with the Flash's skill set. We have Clark Kent. You can't really fuck with Clark Kent. You can bring in Supergirl, and that's about as far as you can fuck with Clark Kent. He has to be Superman. You know, that that has to be a, a rock. We already have a great Wonder Woman. We have a good Batman, but we don't have anything for him by himself. So we don't know how solid we have as a Batman. But if you want to, if, if they're going to break the mold and try to go their own path, they need to also break the mold from themselves and not dial down so hard on what they've done with the comic books and things before it and bring in new shit like a new Batman. What DC needs is legitimate guidance. And right now, yeah. their best option for that is Patty Jenkins. She's the only one that's made a good movie. She's the only one that's made a movie that made money and was well-liked. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and let's face it. I mean, you could have you have Brian Singer still kind of run this thing. Or Zack Snyder. I'm sorry, Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder. Kind yeah. of run this thing. But, I mean, lately he hasn't had the best track record. And then to top it off, I mean, he's been taking the time off of the personal stuff. But, I mean, he hasn't had the best track record. I mean, sure, he did Watchmen. Watchmen was good. I never read any of the Watchmen comics, but I thought the movie was fun. I fell asleep the first few times I watched it. You need somebody that can kind of focus all this energy onto what needs done. Yeah. And they don't have anybody doing that right now. Nobody at DC is doing it. You've got a bunch of stuffed suits sitting in the office somewhere in DC saying, okay, maybe we should just go ahead and do this. Flip a coin. Okay, we're going to try this next, next movie. That's not a good way to run things. It's like that meme, uh, that that meme that goes around where it's a it's a table full of people, the CEOs at the front. What should we do now? And one person says, another Batman, another Superman, another shitty Justice League, and the guy at the end's like, why don't we get all of our directors on the same page? And then, then the next frame <laughs> shows them getting thrown out the window. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's pretty much what they're doing at this point. Just they just need to get their stuff together. And I think Patty Jenkins is the best option they have for that right now. Next up, it has been clowning. The competition at the box office. And I don't mean that as a bad pun. I mean it has literally bent them over and clowned them into submission. Yeah. All uh its box office take <laughs> this year was a this week was a paltry 123.4 million. The second place movie, eight point five million dollars. Yeah. It's like nobody went and saw anything but it this last weekend. Pretty much. I was one of the people that saw it, and there'll be a review coming soon, probably, yeah. but but man, that movie is Flat out, just killing it right now. You haven't seen it yet. I have you, not, but I will be seeing it this week. But but you you've seen the marketing. You've heard yeah. the people talk. You you've read you know the media stuff about it. Yeah. What what is what are you hearing as to why this movie is taking off the way that it has? You know, <laughs> surprisingly enough, I'm not hearing any any reason at all as to why this movie is taking off as much as it is. All the people that I've seen, all the people I know have seen it, has said. Yeah, it was it. You know, it was Stephen King's it, but it wasn't. It wasn't super horrific. It wasn't super graphic. It wasn't super scary. And it, to be honest, I didn't expect the first one to be. You know, the the we're in the kid phase. We're in the we're in the introduction right now. Even if they come together in this movie and put him in the slumber at the end, like they're supposed to, it's still it's still the early stages. The real gore, the real scary shit happens when they're adults. Don't get me wrong. Scary shit happened when they were kids. Like, um, Georgie getting his arm ripped off. Holy fuck. Like, I heard that they put that in the movie. 
Like, Jesus fucking Christ. The kid gets his arm ripped off. But I, there is no actual reason to support why it grows to 123 million. Why so many people are like, we're going to go see it. It has to be because it's Stephen King and because all of the people from my generation and your generation who saw the TV show or the TV miniseries was like, that TV miniseries was awesome. And now we're getting a real movie of it. That's going to be awesome, too. I know that's the only reason my in-laws saw it. I know that that's the only reason uh, my parents saw it. Was because they were like, we liked the, we liked the 19, uh, what was it, 96? It was 1990 when the miniseries came out. Was it 90 yeah. or was it 94? It was, it was, it was But they were like, we liked that so much. We want to see this do well and do better. So everybody went out to go see it. Now, as far as why it <laughs> destroyed every other movie that was in theaters this past weekend, I had no idea. I, I mean, we're, we're borderlining a superhero movie box office numbers like well, that. Well, there, there wasn't a lot of competition. I mean, The Hitman's Bodyguard did not do, has not done shit. Yeah, but about. still, even if there's not competition, that doesn't mean that... Well, there's no good movies out, so we'll just go see it. If there's no good movies out, you, there's just no numbers. All the numbers would be low, regardless of the competition. People don't just go out to go see a movie because, well, it's a Saturday, let's go watch a movie. They used to, but not anymore. Yeah, the second place movie was Home Again, which I think is kind of like a romantic comedy thing. That pulled in $8.5 million. Yeah, and it's, it's staggering that they did $120 million more than number two. Holy shit. Yeah, a lot of these movies, like, uh, Annabelle Creation's been out for a while, and a lot of horror fans have really liked it. I haven't seen it yet. And it's made its money. It's got $96 million in total in five weeks. Right. Wind River is actually a movie that's gotten a lot of critical success. People have really liked it. It just hasn't done anything at the box office. It's only made just short of $25 million in six weeks. Yeah, $25 million in six weeks, and it did $123 million in two days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, Dunkirk's been around for a minute. It's, it's, it's been out for two months. It's made 183 So, by contrast, Dunkirk has made $183 million, just over $183 million in eight weeks. It did $123.4 million in three days. Yeah. And I expect that number to go up a little bit and then taper off. I don't expect them... They had a great opening weekend. I don't expect them to go much further than that. Well, 50 or 60% is the average drop for a movie from week one to week two. A 60% drop would still be about 50 or 53 million next week for it. Yeah. Which would still, you know, it I, would and, I'm close to 200. and I'm anticipating that Home Again is going to drop off by probably about 50%. <laughs> I don't know. I can't go off the top of my head what comes out next week. Uh, oh, uh, Kingsman. Yeah. Kingsman comes out next week. Yep. I think Kingsman could very easily unseat Top, it and, yeah. and put it down to number two. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, it just really depends. They, like like I like I had already mentioned, the, the the crowd of people that were surrounding it is very very uh, diverse. We've got the older generation led that saw the originals, like the older older people, you know, forties to sixties, who are like. We want to see this because I read the book when I was a kid because the movie miniseries was awesome. They're going to go see it. And then the younger kids who are like, I'm not afraid of anything. I show no fear. Let's go watch this horror movie because it just came out. Oh, there's another Purge. Let's go watch Purge. <laughs> They're going to go see it. And then the people in the middle who are typically around my age are like, yeah, I don't do horror. So we've got all these people going this way and this way. But the older people are still going to be more into it than they're going to be in Kingsman. And then we're going to have the demographic of my age group all the way down to the kids. And all the kids who are just now starting to be able to go out and watch movies on their own are going to be like, There's another Kingsman! We're going to go see it! So, I mean, it's going to detract from one section, but it's not going to detract from the other section. I think that we'll still see a lot of people going to see it. And their numbers will still continue to rise. But like I said, it's going to taper off. Um, I mean, we're not going to hit... We're not going to hit uh, Star Wars numbers. Oh, no. <laughs> but 
as far as the Force Awakens made a billion dollars worldwide. <laughs> as far as a non Star Wars movie, though, they're going to make Star Wars num- Star Wars numbers. As, as far as it looks to anything else, they're going to be like, oh shit, it just destroyed. And then the way I got, the way that I see this, one hundred twenty three million dollars. If they haven't started production on the adult version, bought and fucking paid for right there. Well, the budget for this was only thirty five million. Right. So they made this movie for bus fare. Yeah. Compared to what you make movies for these days. Oh yeah. So thirty five million to make one hundred twenty three opening weekend is hey that's not that's not a bad gig at all. No. If I can do that with like three or four movies, yeah. I retire. <laughs> if I can do that with one movie, I'd retire. Are you shitting me? They haven't they haven't signed on the director for the sequel just yet. It needs to be the same guy. But it's it's but it's kind of one of those situations like we talk about with Wonder Woman. It's like who else are you really gonna get at this yeah. point? Because he's he's done horror before. He's done it pretty. I'm well. less interested in who's going to direct it and write it because it's gonna be the same fucking guy as I am interested in. Who the fuck's gonna play these kids as adults? No, we'll get to that. But they, as far as I know, they haven't even officially greenlit the second one. Yet. Oh, well, now, come on now. Now I'm pretty <laughs> sure that, that, that they've probably that as soon as they saw these numbers and saw like the tracking in the week or so before the movie opened, they were probably like, "Oh yeah, we're we're definitely oh, gonna yeah. get this movie going." But but yeah, nothing official has been has even been announced. When the they, one cool thing that you'll see though, and it, this isn't too much of a spoiler, but at the very end of the movie. It's like you see the the red letters it come across the screen and it says chapter one, so it tells you that there's another chapter coming. Oh yeah, which is really well. Cool. There's no there's no way that when they came together and they were like let's remake it, there's no way that they sat down and said we're just gonna do the one with their, when they're kids. If they don't make the adult version, the United States as a whole is gonna rise up as one <laughs> and smite Hollywood. Instantly, they're gonna be like, "You can't do that," and it's gonna be bad. The yeah, numbers are gonna if they don't if they if they really had no intentions of making the adult movie if it wasn't green lit while they were making the children one, then it, you kind of just fucked yourself. Well, I'm sure the only question was is not are we going to make the movie? Is how much is the budget going to be? Because you, well, you start out with looks 35, like it's 123 million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you start out with 35 million dollars for this movie. So with this movie, I mean, let's say this movie is going to do 300 million yeah. over the course of its box office run, which uh, I think might be a little high. But let's say it does 250, 300 million. You're looking at it and say, okay, do we up that 35 million for the next film up to 50 million or 75 million? I think that I think that's the only reason why it hasn't been officially green lit yet, is they're trying they're to see exactly how budget. much money they. They pull in to try to determine exactly what the budget of the next film is going to be. Well, I think, but like well, I said, they also haven't officially signed the director on for the sequel yet. It's going to be, it's got to be the same guy. If it's not the same guy, I mean, we've seen it a lot before. Where from one from one part of the movie series to another, we've got a new director, and it's not bad. But when you're only doing two movies, just get the same fucking. I just don't want them to split this second chapter up into two movies. Yeah. Just just don't. That's our show for today, folks. If you like what you saw, leave a like, a share, and a comment. Let us know what you think about the topics we talked about today. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.